Hi there and welcome to today's vlog and I want to talk today about the subject of grumbling. We seem to live in a society that we where people grumble all the time and uh, I'm sure that those in any position of leadership know what that's like that whatever decision you take as a leader there'll be people who grumble about it. Um, we've had the, the government, I mean I'm not a sticker up for the government but uh, when they implemented plan B there were people who were grumbling about it we don't need that blah 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 but then when they took away plan B there were those who were saying no we don't need to take that away blah 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 grumbling um, I look up uh, the internet and I get uh, headlines like so and so slams so and so so and so complains against so and so grumbling 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 we're becoming a society of grumblers but of course, that's nothing new. Uh, in my Bible reading, <clears throat> reading about the um, Exodus, how God came and rescued the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt and brought them out and promised them to take them to what we call the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. honey. But uh, it didn't take long for the people to start grumbling. Uh, this is from Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 14. The whole community was in uproar wailing all night long and the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The entire community was in on it. Why didn't we die in Egypt or in this wilderness? Why has God brought us to this country to kill us? Why don't we just go back to Egypt? So the story is that uh, people of Israel were really suffering in Egypt they're in slavery they were being downtrodden they cried out to God God sent them a rescuer Moses who miraculously delivered them and they're on the journey to the promised land but there were some problems along the way and they started grumbling they even said why don't we go back let's choose some new leaders and go back just uh, their heads have been turned didn't take them long to start grumbling. I wonder if, you know, how, whether we give in to the temptation to grumble, to complain, to look on the negative instead of the positive. Uh, I remember a story told by uh, a preacher who'd been um, on a conference away in a conference somewhere, and he'd taken his dog with him, and every morning he'd go for a walk with his dog, and every morning as he went for a walk with his dog, he met this chap, and it just so happened the weather was uh, not great, and Every morning he said hello to this chap and the chap would moan about the weather. Oh, it's terrible weather we're having, blah, blah, blah. This went on for two or three days. And then on the next day, it was beautiful sunshine. And he thought, well, the man can't complain this morning. And he said hello to the man. And the man said, haven't we had some bad weather recently? Some people just have seem to have that desire to moan and groan and complain. I uh, remember the... Um, the, I think this isn't a particularly Christian thing, but it's uh, um, one you've probably heard before, the, the think uh, little exercise. So before you speak, think. T, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? And K, is it kind? So before we speak, ask, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Let's watch our language. Let's watch our attitude. Uh, and let's make a difference because we don't always look on the negative. We don't always moan and groan and complain. We are those who see the positive even in tough situations. We are the ones who encourage and build up and support, speak kindly, speak helpfully. Let's make a difference in our lives and with the people that we meet. Let's not be known as grumblers, but as encouragers, as those who speak kind words and bless others with our speech. So there's the thought for the day. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today.